So hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to solve fluid pressure question. Uh, we have a structure A, B, C, D. Uh, the structure is supported at point B uh, by pin support to uh, reactions, horizontal direction and vertical one. Uh, at point D, we have a cable, and we also know that the cable is spaced at two meters. It means that into the board, we have it. every two meters, we have a force, which represents the cable, and of course, if it's a cable, it's only tension force, and the force is known as 100 kilonewton. The structure separates water and mud, and the density of each of them uh, is known. So, this kind of questions, we first need to ask ourselves, if the forces that will act on the structure, are they continuous forces or are they concentrated forces? So, as I just said, the cable is a concentrated force every two meters. About the pin, the pin connection, the, the hinge support, the pin support, we have uh, nothing is known about the spacing. It means that this support is a continuous one. So, next step is to show the pressure diagram. Of course, the pressure is acting uh, at, uh, at the uh, unit of area, so it will act on the structure into the paper. So, sometimes it's very useful to uh, show the 3D sketch of what we have here. So it will look like this. So if this is the structure, of course it's a 3D structure. So at every two meters, we will have a force which represents the tension in a cave. Now the pressure. The pressure is acting perpendicular to the surface. We will represent first the pressure of the water and then the pressure of the mud. So the water. Uh, here the depth is zero, as we can see here the level of the water starting here. So here is zero. I will remind you what is the uh, formula to calculating the pressure. The formula is P equal to rho G. See? The density G. 9.81 and Z, the depth. So starting from zero, where Z is equal to zero and increases linearly, and of course, this value represents the pressure that acting at this point. Let's call it P1. Now, we want to ask ourselves, let's say this is D and this is E. So what is acting along EC? Of course, along this line EC we have same depth of 3 meters. So the value of the pressure will be equal here along all EC. So this is P1, same acting at point E, but perpendicular to the surface. So this one will act also perpendicular to the surface and as I said before it will be also P1. Of course the pressure is acting along all the uh, <coughs> inside to the board uh, direction so it looks like this. and this one also. Okay, something like this. And, okay, now we want to uh, calculate what is P1. So let's write it here. P1 is equal to rho. Rho, we're on the side of the water, so rho is 1000. Times. 
times the depth. So we said point E, the depth is 3 meters. Great. So this is the value of the value of P1 is 29,430. Units of P, force, the unit of area, Newton, meter square. Great. Now, let's talk about the mod side. Same, the mod starting at the same point, same level. So at point D, we will have Z equal to zero. So it starts from value zero, and it increases linearly, and it's as always perpendicular to the surface. Let's call it P2. Same as well along EC, along BA we have the same depth of 3 plus 4, 7 meters. So we'll have same pressure of P2 that is acting along AB. And of course this is also 3D picture, so it's going into the board. Okay, so P2. Now it's the mud side, the density is 1300, 9.81, now it's the depth is 7 meters. Great. So this is, will be always the first step to show to represent the pressure. Next step, at the end we, will, we want to get concentrated forces. The concentrated force will represent the volume of the pressure. So, first we need to understand that these picture of the pressures are the same picture for every section that we will do into the board. But we will need to take into account that we have a spacing of two meters for the cable. So, we will calculate only the one region of two meters. It means that we will take only one region of two meters. We will take all the pressure that acting here in these two meters, that in, in which we have only single cable with uh, 100 kilonewton, and we will calculate this area. Now. This was a sketch, you don't have to show it in the exam, but it's good to understand, I, I showed it just to, that you will understand it. So now let's take the pressures and we'll transfer it first to distributed load, the difference between 3D picture and 2D picture. The next step will be to show the concentrated forces. So. Uh, so the spacing is 2 meters. So if we're looking on P1, P1 times this spacing of 2 meters. So it will be P1 times S, which S is 2. It will be exactly the same picture, but now I'm multiplying it by 2 because I took the width of 2 meters. P2 times S and P2 times S. Okay, so now we move from 3D into 2D. Now I want to, to show the uh, equivalent forces. I want to uh, represent what is the equivalent force of this, the, let's say, the uniform distributed load. So of course the, distribu the, the equivalent force is just the area of the distributed load, or in other words, we can say that the equivalent force represents the volume of the pressure, both of them are the same. So, we want to show the equivalent or the horizontal force and its location. So let's start with uh, this triangle, P1 times S, P1 times 2, 
this is the basis, the height is 3 meters. Triangle, the center of triangle is 2 thirds of 3 meters, means that it will act somewhere here, let's say. Let's go to this force F1. The location of F1, 2 thirds of 3 meter, 2 meters. <coughs> Next, rectangular. It's the area, P1 times S, and this length is 2 meters, so this is F2. We'll, in a few seconds, we'll write what is F1, what is F2, and of course, F2 is acting 1 meter from point A. Next one, one more triangle. Now the height is seven meters, so it's going to be somewhere here, F3. The location of F3 is two-thirds from this point, or one-third from this point, seven over three. And F4 acting in the center of D, so this distance is d over 2. Okay, so now we want to write what is f1, f2, f3, and f4. f1, <clears throat> the area of the triangle, so it's p1 times p1s, times 3 meter over 2. F2. The area of the square. 2 meters times P1S. F3, triangle, so it's half P2S times 7, F4, the area square, P2S times what we need to find is D. So everything is known, P1 known as 2 meters, only the D is what we need to find. Okay, so now let's find it. So let's see what we have. I will show it one more time. We have a force. F2, which is acting here one meter from the vertical part. Force F1, which is acting here two meters from point D. We have the cable, 100 kilonewton under angle of 45 degrees. We have force F3, which we also know it, and the distance of F3 is 7 over 3 meters. Here we have support, and the force, last one, F4, with a distance of D over 2. Now, we have everything, we have just F4 in terms of D, and we need to write an equation somewhere, we have of course three equations to write because it's, it's a 2D structure, some of the forces in Y, some of the forces in X, and some of the moments. We will use some of the moments at point B because we don't want to calculate the reaction because they just ask us what is D. So. The equation will be sum of the moments at point B equals to zero.
So, so we have five forces. Let's start with the cable. The cable is 100 kilonewton acting in the diagonal direction. Uh, when we act, when we're searching the sum of the moments at point B, best way to do it is just to look on the components. We need to take into account that usually we will use newtons and meters for the forces and for the pressures. Here we have 100 kilonewton, so we will uh, write it as 100 times one well, times 1,000 newton. So, the component, the vertical and the horizontal components, both the same, sin, sin, sin 45 degrees or cosine 45 degrees, we'll get 100 times 10 to the power of 3 over square root of 2. So, the vertical component has no arm to point B, it's cross point B, the uh, contribution is 0. So what we have here, 100, the force here, the horizontal one, times the arm, 7 meters. So, 100, then the power of 3, square root of 2, times 7 meters. Right hand side movement, rule, out of the board. F1 times, this is 2 meters, it means this is 5 meters. F1 times 5, also positive. Next one, uh, let's find some positive. F4 is also positive. F4 times D over 2. Next one, F2 negative inside to the board. F2 times 1 meter minus F2 times 1 meter minus F3 times 7 over 3 meters. This is all equal to 0. Just to make sure that we have all the forces, F1, F2, F3, F4, and the cable. Great. Now, the only unknown is D. We have D here in 4, F4 is a function of D, and the arm is also a function of D. So if we're calculating it, we'll get that D square equals to 7.161. Means that D equals to 2.68 meters. Of course, this is the minimal value of D to maintain equilibrium, and this is the answer. This is a question of hydrostatics. As I said, the main idea first to ask ourselves if we have any spacing, if it's written that we have spacing, means that we will take, need to take this spacing and represent all the forces that acting in one spacing. If we don't have a spacing, so the translation between the, the stresses and the distributed loads will be times s. We can choose 1, 2, 10, 15. Usually we'll choose 1 because it's make our life uh, much easier, so it will be just the distributed load will be equal just to the pressure times 1. Um, that's all. Usually, this is the type of the questions that you will have uh, in your final exam. Thank you.